Good morning, everyone. I'm Alex from Board Game Co. If you don't already subscribe to the channel, which you should totally do, by the way. And I am running on four, maybe five hours of sleep. See, I'm coming back from Toronto, which also means I'm coming back from spending a week in Toronto, basically. Five days. And that does mean that I had a bunch of boxes when I got back, so I figured I'd do another one of these random unboxing unboxings. Now, I don't know if or when this will go up on the channel. I like this concept of video, but I don't like overdoing it. To me, it should be like a once a month thing. It's just that most of the time I have to dedicatedly work to not open boxes if I, if I, if I want there to be more than one box at a time to unbox. Now, again, coffee. I actually visited Board Game Coffee while in Toronto. Uh, also, this shirt has never been more true because four or five hours of sleep will do that to a person. We have our, oh, wait, wait, coffee shot again. Coffee shot, you know, little knife, coffee, all that stuff. I enjoy doing that. By the way, when I was in Starbucks, when I was in Toronto, when I was in Toronto, I had something from Starbucks, which I don't often go to Starbucks. I find their beverages way too sweet. But what I did have is I had, let me just, let me see what I can do this here. Okay, let's move these off one thing at a time. Okay. Yeah. So when I was in Starbucks uh, in Toronto, I went, when I was in Toronto, I went on a coffee date with my mother because I haven't seen my mother in a year and a half because of COVID and the border and all that. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to order because I don't get things from coffee from Starbucks. And I saw that they had a, what was it again? It was a shaken, that was really, really should not have taken that much time to cut. But I, they had a shaken oat uh, something. It was brown sugar espresso shaken something. Okay. It was basically uh, espresso with ice cubes and then with uh, brown sugar syrup or oat milk or whatever. It was absolutely delicious. It was not too sweet. It was very subtly sweet, which I appreciated. What do we have? Ooh, okay. I know what this is. It was very subtly sweet and I will be looking up the recipe online to make my own. So, I don't actually know the name of this box because it's printed in, I assume Chinese, but I don't actually know. Maybe it's, maybe it's Japanese. I don't know the letters. They look, they look something-ish. So let's go ahead and put that down there. And we got this box over here. This is going to be the next game from Ping Yao, the Chinese banks. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. That one was on Kickstarter a bit ago and they're happy. That's what we got in here. They, I don't usually do unboxings. Oh, this is going to be Dun, Dun Ha, Dun Huang, Pearl on the Silk Road. Designed by Wu Shang, published by Jing Studio, which did, they did uh, Ping Yao, Five Banks, or whatever. Ping Yao, the Chinese Banks. Ancient Chinese City of Dung Hang. Each of your gains different unique abilities. I like that already. I don't know what's going on in this game. I'll take a look at it later. This is not meant to be an unboxing unboxing. I just uh, got a little bit excited. So yeah, this is going to be on Kickstarter, I believe. Well, it says January 11th, 2022. But take that with a grain of salt. Anything that far out this early, there's no guarantee whatsoever. It looks like the box got a little bit of damage in shipping, but also a prototype. Although I don't know if it is a prototype. This might be an actual final copy of the game. You see, I remember this happened with Ping Yao, now that I'm thinking about it. Ping Yao had a thing where the game was already produced and published, and they were just reproducing it for an American audience, for a North American audience, uh, or European for that matter as well, but they're basically making the game in English. So this may well be a final copy of the game, where I'm just getting English instructions and a copy of a, of a game that already exists. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, let's go. What's next over here? Next up, we have this bad boy. So, we're going to go ahead and open this one. This is from R&R. &R. Okay, let's see what we got here. I don't actually know what we got here. Let's try to find... Oh, am I missing a box? This one... No, that one's there. Cool. Okay. What do we got here? Ooh, fun. Okay. This is going to be Coco Pelli. Coco Pelli, which is from Stefan Fell. Now this one, these boxes are going to get in the way very quickly. Uh, this one, I did not back. Uh, Queen Games is sending me this one, which is good because my opinion, it's always weird. This is the thing that's weird about this channel. Which, well, one of the things that's weird about this channel. So I frequently cover games from two stances. I cover games from, here's my opinion of this game. It's amazing. It's the best. I love it. Stefan Feld is one of my favorite designers of all time. By the way, that part's true. This game I haven't actually played yet, so I can't talk about that. But then I'll talk about the value of things, which means... I'm in this weird state where publishers have to be kind of okay that I might critique them from one side, but compliment from the compliment them from the other, or vice versa. So in the case of Coca-Pelli, I was like, 
it seems like a little too expensive for a game that is untested or unreviewed on the general market. Uh, you know, it has some deluxe locations, but they come with like acrylic stuff. You know, it's nice, nice extras, but nothing that I really felt the need to back on Kickstarter. And now they're sending me the game. So like, I mean, which is nice, by the way, because there are publishers who won't. There are publishers who would be like, well, that Alex Radcliffe guy, that board game co-dude, you know, said don't back our game, which I never say don't back our game. I say whether I think it's a good value or not. But then, again, some publishers will not send me a game, understandably so, because they they feel offended. They feel like I hurt their sales, and to a certain extent, I may have. But other publishers will recognize, and kudos to Queen Games for doing so, other publishers will recognize that I can love your game, and I can say, buy this game, it's a... Well, I don't say buy this game. This game is a 4 to 5, it's a 5 to 5, I love it, it's amazing, this is the best Stefan Feld game since... Bruges? Castle Burgundy? One of those two? Something like that? And then it might still turn into effectively marketing for them, because I am... At the end of the day, I am a marketing agent, so to speak. I don't get paid from the publishers, but I'm still doing marketing for them. So I could not think it's a good back and still tell people, go ahead and not, again, not tell, I don't tell people to get that game, but I can be positive with a game. The downside, by the way, the real downside is it also means that I have two opportunities to be negative. So I could actually play this game and be like, not only did I tell you not to back it, but I don't even think it's a good game. That's really, it's weird. It's just a weird relationship. I can be nice, I can be nice twice, I can be mean twice, I can be nice once and mean the other way. And ooh, ooh, the chirp. Okay. So those of you who watched my last unboxing video, those of you who watched my last unboxing video might understand what's going on with this one. So in my last random boxes unboxing, I think it was in that video, I think it was in the random boxes one, maybe it was a different one, I'm pretty sure it was the random one, I talked about how I was having back pain, which I have periodically. And some people talked about, oh, you have to do X, you have to do Y, you have to do Z, Z, I feel like a true Canadian. This is going to be the chirp wheel. Now, anyone who thinks that, and there's a few different sizes, by the way, there's, you know, this one over here as well. So I got that around my head. Now, anyone who thinks marketing doesn't work, marketing works. You know those Facebook ads you ignore? Like this Facebook ad that I've ignored successfully for, uh, I want to say... I don't know if, you know, you know the thing where like Google hears you say something or people think that everyone's listening. So I, I don't know if my internet or my SEO and what, I don't know who knows, but someone knows I have back pain because this chirp, pain, this chirp wheel has been advertised me to me nonstop for probably a year now. I just regularly get ads of people rolling their back along these with its nice solid grooves and that way it gives you a little spinal rest and it's not too long which means it actually gets to focus the pressure points over there as opposed to diffusing across your whole back like a foam wheel. I know all the marketing points because I've seen the ads again and again and again and I was not buying it because we don't buy stuff based on ads. I'm not that weak. But then it was time to be in the market for something for my back because I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and get something. And I went on Amazon. I didn't even look for the chirp wheel. I went on Amazon and I typed in like, you know, back pain and started searching for products and the chirp wheel came up and it was actually well weighted. It was like four and a half stars or 4.7 out of five. And I was like, well, if you are 4.7 out of five and it's been marketed aggressively, ignore me while I drop sharp knives and it's been marketed aggressively to me, then maybe I'll go ahead and get it. And so I grabbed the chirp wheel, which means on that guy, apparently. Now, the good news is they're not so expensive. They're not cheap, but... Like, this full set was, like, 70 bucks, and a regular foam wheel would be, like, 40 So, it's again, I paid more for it. I paid more for a name brand, but I was like, you know what? I'll give it a try. Plus, they have free returns, whatever it is, if it doesn't work. And the reviews, like I said, are generally very positive. Most people are like, wow, I've tried so many different things, and this is the first one that works, and blah 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 and I love it. And I'm like, that's great. Ultimately, I will be the decider for myself... But it is great to see that many positive things. So that's going to be for back pain. Now, by the way, as expected, which is, it's hard to know exactly what impact it will or won't have because my back pain is intermittent and it's already on the, the upward swing. I go through like a week or two of back pain once a year and then it's on the upward swing. So my back pain will be getting better, but maybe not because of the chirp wheel. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. What is this? Oh, oh. Do I show it on this video? I guess so. It'll be in a different video too. Okay. Now, I'm not going to show everything here, but this will probably be making its way into my next deluxification video. So we're going to have a little bit of a spoiler here of what's going on. These are going to be from Draw Lab Games. Let's pick one that I particularly like. Ooh, that's actually... <gasps> 
I love it. I love it. I love it. The Mitchell. Okay, I'm just gonna show this one over here. Okay, and then the rest will will put off to the side. So basically, Draw Lab Games. They sent me a bunch of bags, which they sent me in the past uh, one or two, but this time they're sending a whole bunch of bags. Now, I actually do use the bags they sent me last time, which is nice because the pro... So, I do this series every single month. Let's give some context here. I do a series... Ooh, that's nice. We could go like that. I do a series every single month where I go over deluxifications of games. Now, for the most part, I try to be frank about what I think about the things. The problem is with bags. Bags are a particularly tricky one because... I don't... Ooh, I like that one too. I'm not going to stick with those two. Okay, cool. So I'm going to dump these over here. Bags are a tricky one because I don't use bags. So I can say, hey, it looks pretty, but that's all I can really say. Now, it happens to be that the two bags they sent me last time, I actively use. One of them is my general coin bag, and one of them is my general dice bag. And I, I use them, and I actually do like them. So let's go ahead and show you some of these bags. These will be featured in the next deluxification video, by the way. So... Probably, I assume. But either way, so these are going to be some nice bags from Draw Lab. I, I should probably check the prices on these. But they, they have a nice heft. I like them. Yeah, Draw Lab Games. Draw Lab Games is going to be the company, and this one's illustrated by the Mitchell, which is why I picked it out. Uh, but Draw Lab makes board games. They make coins, and they make dice bags. Dice bags, not dice. So it's going to be over here. See over here? Got that, like there. Show you on the tap cam. That's going to be art by the Micho on your little bag, which is awesome. Good for them. We'll cover these more at some future point. Time to focus on the boxes and packages on this side. I think I successfully got everything over here. Time to focus over here. Now this one... Oh, interesting. Huh. What is this? Is this replacement parts? I don't know. Oh, oh, I hate these. Oh, no. I hate these bags. These are the ones where if you cut them open, you... Okay, I may even skip opening this. What is this? Okay. What is this? Oh, oh, I know what this is. Okay. In fact, this might be relevant to another box we have here. This is going to be pieces for Eos. Eos Island of Angels. Oh, boy. I am, like, getting these things all over my table. I do not like it one bit. I, oh, I do not like it, Sam. I am. Uh, Eos Island of Angels. I remember seeing this message from, from uh, them that they sent me parts because they neglected, they sent me a prototype for Eos Island of Angels, and they neglected to send me all the pieces, so this is my, uh, here's the pieces we missed package. What are those? Those dice? Those can't be dice. Those are dice. Those are custom dice. Okay, anything else in here before I continue splintering my entire table with styrofoam? I hate these packages. These packages, you cut them open, and then you're done. It's like glitter. It gets everywhere. Never, never goes away. Now my whole Oh my gosh, I am so upset right now. I know this is my upset face, right? This is my upset face. So these, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, these pieces were not in the original mailing. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Um, I will go ahead and put these off to the side. Let's go ahead and put those dice in here so I don't completely lose them. And then we will put these on top of here. Eos Island of Angels. So by the way, for uh, context, because it's interesting, one of these things that I've, I've talked about with these random unboxing videos, I've mentioned it in the comments, is that I may accidentally, not accidentally, I may reveal a game that I then don't cover. It can happen. I can reveal a game, play it, and be like, eh, wasn't a game I enjoy or want to go back to, and I don't cover it. And you might be like, whoa, Alex had a game. Which actually happened recently. It happened in the last unboxing video with Tournament Fishing. Tournament Fishing is a game that, um, who's doing it? Who is doing it? What's their name? Uh, Gaming Goat. Gaming Goat's doing uh, tournament fishing. They have an upcoming Kickstarter for the new art version of it. I played it, and it wasn't for me. It, it was a game that, if you look at the reviews, the reviews actually makes it completely aligned with what my experience was. It was the art was gorgeous. I can see it's a solid deck builder. It just it was way too luck dependent in my opinion. It's uh, simulating the concept of fishing. That's what it's simulating. So it means it has the standard luck of a deck builder. But then it also has an additional mechanic of you are searching for fish in different areas, so you can, until you get more equipment, and even then the right equipment has to come up at the right time, you are scanning for fish in different areas, and if you don't find a fish, you can't go fishing that round. Now that part's not that bad. 
because if you if you can't go fishing, you can use your hand to buy stuff instead. So there is a trade off there where at least rounds that you don't find fish and therefore don't score points, you end up upgrading and building your deck. Like I said, it's a deck builder. The real problem for me is that in addition to both those forms of luck, they also had the luck of fight cards. Once you find a fish, it simulates a, the fish fighting with you. And that I did not like at all because the fish fighting with you will draw random fight cards of which you have to have matching colored cards in your hand. Each card has an icon in the top left corner. And then you could potentially lose the whole fight with the fish. So you find the fish. That part's all done. You have the right hand of cards. That ha part's all done. You fight the fish and it escapes because of the luck of the draw if you didn't have the right fish card, which means not only there, you can't even go shopping with their hand because you've used it in the fight. <clears throat> really obnoxious. It, it added a level of just plain and simple not funness to the game that I did not like in any way. The rest of the game I liked. I liked the cards, I liked the upgrading, I liked the art. I did not like the idea that you can go fishing, have a fish bite you, and your entire hand goes bust in the game because of the luck of the draw. Was not a fan of that. And so I reached out and said, hey, you know what? It's not like, it's a game that I just wasn't that excited about, and I wasn't going to cover it. So, I mean, again, if you've watched these series, you'll get behind the scenes stuff like this where, ooh, yay, awesome. So, yeah, now, why am I bringing that up? Why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because, I'm bringing that up because of the following. I'm bringing that up because Eos, Island of Angels, unlike Kokopelli, which I haven't played, but Eos, Island of Angels, I have played. I've played it online already, and I already know I like it. How much do you like it, Alex? You'll have to wait and watch the review. To find out. So, these over here. These two I'm excited about. Cascadia and Calico. That is definitely something exciting because these two games, Calico is a game is a Kickstarter I passed on, Cascadia is a Kickstarter I did not pass on. I have played this one, I have not played this one. I'm looking forward to playing this one. It's adorable. Look at that little cat. I have to unbox these at some point and get these moving. This is gonna be from uh, Flat Out Games, but AEG actually recently acquired Flat Out Games. Not that's not true. That's not true. AEG, I believe, is doing the distribution for Flatout Games. They have some sort of arrangement. It does result in AEG being printed on the box. But more than that, who's to really say? So, we got one more box, and then I got to go do other things. Other things, because it's going to be a long day. What do I have in here? Now, this, by the way, may well be EOS Island of Angels. Let's find out. It is! It is EOS Island of Angels. Oh. Okay, this is... So... That's going to do that. I was going to say, once I don't have... Oh my gosh, okay. This is obnoxious. So. Sorry for the noise. Okay, 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 perfect. Okay. That's all done. I have a mess of boxes here. I'll have to go deal with those later. Eos Island of Angels. Let's talk a bit about this one so you have an understanding of what's coming up. We have the box, which I guess I'll put all the bits into, except for those boards, because those boards are way too large, apparently. We have the rulebook, which is annoyingly long, but I've also played it, so I do need to read the rules because I know they've been playtesting it aggressively. They have been constantly changing things. We have tons of cards, all in a mishmash in the box, which we'll add these components to. So we have all these components now in the box. Yay! Okay, but the art in this game is excellent. So Eos Island of Angels has this concept of your fighting demons and your raising angels. So you're going to have this board over here. Let's go ahead. In fact, I didn't even realize this. I turned on the top shot earlier. It won't be for most of the things here, but I did already show a bag. So I guess we're using the top shot. I usually don't show the top shots for these. So you can see over here, Eos Island of Angels. You have this board in the middle here, which is actually smaller than I thought it was in person. I've only played this on TTS. You're going to have ships. Oh, this board is... Not well done. Either prototype. Uh, you're gonna have ships that are moving around the board. You're gonna have ships that are navigating to different spots, trying to get to these center areas to raise angels in these various areas. There's gonna be various quests that pop up on the board as well, which they have these things pre-printed on the board. I don't remember those, so I really just have to read the rules because rules have changed. Uh, you're gonna have support the forces. Is that me forgetting this, or do I? I can't remember if that's a thing or not. We have the glory track. We'll be getting glory over here. You have a chronicle track where every time you fight uh, demons or raise angels, you'll be marking that. There's going to be an endgame trigger there. Now, the real fun of the game, the meat of it as far as I'm concerned, and the reason I like it, is because we have six factions over here, okay? 
Now, each faction has an aspect that you're going to constantly be taking actions in the factions, and it has one of those things I love in games, where you want to upgrade everything in the order you want. You're going to want to upgrade this first, because that will let you upgrade everything else faster. You want to upgrade this first, because that will let you fight more. Everything is going to be, you're constantly going to be upping your little markers over here on each of your crew members, improving and upgrading your crew members as you take different actions. Now, the art over here, you can probably see this. But the art is gorgeous. These factions all have a very solid feel to them. They all feel unique. They, they, they just look beautiful. I think I've peeled off some, some... What did I do over here? What did I do? Okay, that's ready board. Is this? I'm just going to pull this off because it looks like it can come off. We have the Kusan. We have the Quanon, who are basically just, you know, octopus heads. We have the Guild of Seafarers. That head looks inappropriately large just poorly structured there and then the noon back to the beginning but yeah eos island of angels solid game i will have more coverage of it once i have an opportunity to actually play the newest version of that so this has been your unboxing for well all these things and um that's basically it so until next time i am alex radical from board game co i hope you enjoyed this video i'm gonna go get working on other things because i just woke up got a coffee did an unboxing and it's time to go uh go through the rest of the day until next time. And again, I don't know when this video goes up. I don't know what my plans are around this video. Cause, cause well, you know, I already did one of these recently, so it may go on Patreon first. Maybe not. We'll see. I'll figure it out until next time. I'm Alex Radcliffe from board game co and have a good one.